Hi guys, it's Leah. Welcome back or welcome if you are new and welcome to a new weekly reading vlog. So today is Monday the 13th of March. I'm pretty shocked actually that I am starting this at the start of the week for once. But yeah, I thought I would start the video today because I am off of work at the bookshop for about a week. So what better time to film a weekly reading vlog? And I am planning on reading quite a couple of exciting books. I do have other video plans this week, which I am reading books for, but I'm just not gonna talk about them in this video. But that does mean that the only books that I am currently reading are for that video. So I do wanna start one today and I'm gonna tell you all about it because I'm so excited. It's one of my most anticipated books of the year. But before I do that, I did film a couple of clips last week when I was invited to the Women's Prize for Fiction, their kind of screening for A Room of One's Own in London. It was such an incredible night and kicking off Women's History Month with that was such a dream come true as both a Women's Prize for Fiction fan and a Virginia Woolf fan. It was just such an empowering and beautiful evening hearing so many talented women speak about their experiences as women, but like authors and their feminism. It was just so, so good and I was so honoured to have been invited. So I do have a little bit of footage of that day and that evening, so I'll include that now. wearing this every day for the rest of my life. And yeah, they also sent me some of their gorgeous, gorgeous merch, which is such a dream come true. I really do want to read the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction too. It's a video I've always kind of had an interest for filming, but there is like 16 titles in the long list. So that is pretty long. So I think I might wait until the short list. I think it comes out in April and read those for a video. I don't know if that is something you want to see, definitely let me know. But I actually hadn't read any of the long list so far this year, which I'm quite surprised about. But I guess that means that I just have so many new, exciting books that I can reach for now. But talking about books and today, one of the books that I think I definitely do wanna pick up this week, and I actually do really wanna start it today, is Greek Lessons by Han Kang. This is one of my most anticipated books for the entire year. It comes out on the 27th of April, and I was really, really hoping that I somehow was gonna get a proof of it. And I have, and I saw it actually when I got to work yesterday and like unpackaged it. I haven't felt happiness like it. I don't actually really know what this one is about, but Han Kang is an author who definitely has potential to become an all-time favorite. I have read The Vegetarian, which I did like. I would probably like it more now than when I first read it. And then last year I read The White Book and that was an instant five stars. It's like a book of little vignettes, I guess, of the color white and what they mean. And it's about memory and love and trauma. It's a heartbreaking read, but her writing style instantly became one of my favorites and I am gonna read every single thing she ever released. And this is her newest, so I'm so happy to have this. But yeah, very excited. That is definitely what I'm gonna read today. I also want to unbox this fairy loot box because I've had it sitting on my bookshelf or like on my floor, I guess, for quite some time now, but I wanted to unbox it in this vlog, but I didn't have a chance to intro it yet. I'm not entirely sure what this is. It could be like the adult book of the month, but it could also be my Heartstopper Volume 3 Fairy Loot Edition. I have ordered quite a lot from Fairy Loot recently. It's becoming a bad habit, but I'm just so obsessed with their stuff. So I guess we're just gonna see what it is 
together. Okay, yeah, it is the adult book for February. I know what this one is just because, I mean, I'm unboxing it pretty late. It is like the middle of March, but I haven't seen what the Fairy Loot edition looks like. I see this book every single day at the bookshop and it's one that a lot of people are buying. I don't think it's one that I would have bought myself, but saying that, I actually don't know what it is about. So I could end up loving the premise and just wanting to pick it up like right away. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, it's definitely upside down. So the book is The Adventures of Amina al Sirafi, and it is by Shannon Shakaborty. Why do I recognize that author's name? What else has she done? The City of Brass. Okay, yeah, that is where I recognize them from. But look at these sprayed edges. Those are stunning. And then it's just like black on the top and the bottom. The end papers are this gorgeous matte. And I'm gonna see what is on the naked hardback or you guys can see it first. Okay, that is beautiful. There is something about like a naked hardback book having a design on it that just gets me going. Like that could be the entire book and like the cover and I would not complain. Why do I wanna cry at that dedication? So the dedication is for all those parenting in hardship during pandemics, through climate crises and under occupation, for those struggling to keep food on the table and juggle multiple jobs and impossible childcare, for everyone who set aside their own dreams briefly or forever to lift those of the next generation. That might just be the best dedication I've ever read in a book. Okay, I need to read it now. Okay, so that is the parcel. I now need to find a place to put that on my bookshelf because my fantasy shelf, I only have one because I don't read a lot of fantasy, but it's now full. So that's gonna be fun. Honestly, I feel like every time I film a video, whether it's like a YouTube video or a TikTok video, I do a little book reorganization every single time I put the books back. So I'm probably gonna film a couple more TikToks today and I'll probably find space to put it on that shelf. <laughs> it's currently 10 past two. And like I said, because I have the entire week off, I really wanna get ahead of content. So I'm gonna do some more of that today before reading or starting Greek lessons. I also, oh my God, today is the last Last of Us day. It's the finale of The Last of Us and I am not prepared. I really wanna film my reaction for the episode, whether it's in this video or like its own video, but I don't know how that's gonna work for Sky. I feel like they're probably gonna be very on it with you know, like copyright stuff. And I did also film my reaction to episode three in my last weekly reading vlog, which I love doing. I would so love to do more reactions on this channel. Like I have done a couple in the past, but I don't really know the ins and outs of doing it. And I feel like I would just love to react to stuff that I'm just so passionate about and like, get to watch my reactions for the first time. And also I love watching people's reactions. You best believe that the second that I finished The Last of Us finale today, because I'm definitely watching it today, whether I film it or not, I'm gonna watch everyone's reactions because I need someone else to experience the heartbreak with me. But yeah, I'm gonna do all of that and I'll talk to you guys later. It's currently Wednesday. I have been running errands all day and somehow have acquired a lot of packages. <laughs> I don't know how this has happened. Somehow I had five packages at my old house delivered there. So I went to pick them up today. I only know what one of them is because I did stupidly order it to the wrong house because I did end up moving. But I don't know what the other four are. And on top of that, I received two packages anyway today. So I thought I would just do a bit of an unboxing. So this is what we're working with. <laughs> I'll do the Fairy Loot one first because I'm pretty sure this is my Heartstopper copy the green yeah so this is my heartstopper volume three copy i heard that this has a little bit of a misprint in it so fairly apparently are sending out some new copies to everyone that got one but this is absolutely stunning i do have all of them so far do you know what let's see them side by side so this is all of them side by side they look so good i'm literally obsessed in the sprayed edges i really really want to also get my hands on the fourth one when it comes out because 
These are just so beautiful. I think arguably, oh yeah, my favorite part of these are the naked hardback, like underneath the dust jacket. I don't know how well you can see that because of the window, but these are just always so beautiful. Yeah, I'm just so happy that I have these and I'm even more happy that I've now finally got my hands on it. The only other one that I know what it is, is this is a Waterstones package and I'm pretty sure it's Girl from the Other Side Volume 3 by Nagavi. I ordered Volumes 2 and 3 quite a while ago after reading and loving the first one, but they've only just arrived. The second one did arrive yesterday, hence why I'm assuming this is the third. <laughs> I'm absolutely obsessed with all of the covers this manga series has. I really want to carry on reading them. And I do actually have on reserve at work the like really nice bound up deluxe editions, but they are a bit expensive. So I don't know whether I should get them before reading the single volumes or after. But I feel like they are things that I'm definitely going to want to collect because they are so beautiful. But yeah, very, very excited to carry on with this series. And the rest of these, I have absolutely no idea what they are. I think they're all from publishers. So let's see. Okay. So this must have been sent pretty recently. This is I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. It is in the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I was actually going to buy this anyway, so I'm so happy that they sent this to me. With it comes this gorgeous bookmark, which, do you know what? I love a matching bookmark to a book moment, so I'll be using that. We have some pins with some quotes from the book on, and then these like patches that you can iron on to things why does this not want to focus <laughs> i'm so excited to read this it was one that i was quite keen on reading anyway and then saw it was long listed for the women's prize and obviously now i have to so thank you so much granta i'm definitely gonna read this soon most of these actually are from them these two are also from granta so i'm gonna do those quickly i have no idea what that is so this is violets by alex hyde flicking through it it looks like poetry but i think it's a book written in verse although i might be wrong so i'm gonna read it really quick not read the entire book really quick that would be very impressive but read the blurb <laughs> diffused with power and beauty violets is a moving lyrical novel about the sacrifices we make in the course of a life and the strength of two women who choose to forge a new path for themselves and then the last one from granta this one feels huge Stop it. Oh my god, okay. So this is Burnham Wood by Eleanor Caton. I have been wanting to read this ever since it came into the bookshop. I was actually invited to like the launch event for this book, but I unfortunately couldn't make it. So I just never assumed that I was going to get a proof in the end. I'm so excited. So this is Eleanor Caton's newest release. It did come out this year. She is the author of The Luminaries, which is obviously very popular. And it says that it's a gripping literary thriller. I have had really good things about this and I definitely was going to purchase a copy again like I'm a fan. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for these. Thank you so much to Granta Books. You guys always, always provide the most fun, interesting, incredible books. I love it. This is the only other one that was waiting for me at my old house. So I have no idea what it could be. Like, I don't know how long it's been there. I am so intrigue so this is ink blood sister scribe by emma tours and it comes out in july i'm not gonna read the synopsis just because it's quite long but this sounds so good it also says that it is century and delray's biggest launch of 2023 which is very exciting on the back it says joanna i'm sorry don't let your mother in keep this book safe and away from your blood I love you so much, tell Esther. Safe to say, I'm intrigued. It also came with this little card that says, enjoy Leah, which is just the nicest thing ever. But it does also say they're watching you, so I'm kind of terrified. But this sounds so good. It's giving thriller, fantasy thriller, which I have kind of been craving. So I'm probably going to start this one soon. Thank you so much. And then the last one that I did actually get today, but I don't really know what it's going to be. And this is The Sharp Edge of Silence by Cameron Kelly Rosenblum. I have seen people unbox this on TikTok. I've heard it's meant to be quite good. I think this is also a YA book. On the back, hotkey books, which I love when they do this. They have like kind of key words for what the book is about. And this one is privilege, toxic masculinity, revenge, and smoking gun. That sounds very fun. Thank you so much, hotkey books. I have acquired a lot of books now. I don't know where I'm going to put these on my shelf. So I would say that was a pretty successful, spontaneous book on unboxing i hope you enjoyed that segment of the vlog i'm now gonna go re-watch the entirety of the last of us and make some cinnamon rolls i'll see you soon <laughs> stop
stunning. going for it today. It is Friday the 17th of March and I thought I would come on and give a little update because I'm very aware, as far as I can remember anyway, there aren't that many talking updates in this video. For the most part, because it is my week off from work at the bookshop, I've just been enjoying like reading, doing nothing, but also filming. I have been filming a little bit more for my other video that is going to go up soon, hopefully, where I'm reading other books that I can't talk about in this one. But I am now, apart from that reading two books. I did end up picking up Greek Lessons by Han Kang but I'm only 30 pages in. I didn't read that much of it the day that I picked it up but I am really enjoying it so far. I feel like it's going to be such a good commentary like all of the books from her that I've read thus far on humanity and trauma and connection and relationships. So far it follows a young woman who is taking lessons in Greek and learning the language of Greek but she currently doesn't speak and her teacher of the class is going blind. It's currently definitely a story that focuses a lot on language and communication and how we communicate through different languages or languages that have been forgotten to history and of course too because she doesn't speak and her teacher day by day is losing his eyesight it kind of creates this very melancholic tone. It's making me question and consider how like they're going to communicate once he does lose his eyesight if she cannot speak and it is just so fascinating and I'm really loving it so far because it's so short I do kind of want to take my time with it but that being said I'm definitely reading a little bit slow at the minute. But then I've also picked up Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This has been on my TBR oh my god probably for years now and I always knew that I wanted to pick it up and that I would probably adore it but for some reason I just never gravitated towards it and because of The Last of Us I'm in my like post-apocalyptic dystopian kind of era again and this is the only one on my current TBR that fits into that so I was just like right I need a new fix now that I've watched The Last of Us two times already and I'm very tempted to rewatch it for a third time all the way through. I need my post-apocalyptic fix so I opted for this and I'm currently I think about 60 pages in. Where are the numbers? Okay I'm 72 pages in and again I'm really enjoying it. Where I'm at in it is it kind of starts when the outbreak is first happening and I love that perspective in any post-apocalyptic ever like I always find it so so intriguing and then we flash forward into the future where it's been a couple of years into the apocalypse and there's this kind of group of people that perform Shakespearean like tragedies and plays in the apocalypse and that is definitely something that I'm finding really really intriguing to have in a post-apocalyptic read because obviously like why would you be doing a play of Shakespeare's tragedies or like comedies in the apocalypse but I guess you would because you want humanity to carry on. I'm also loving the atmosphere it is just what I kind of need right now for the post-apocalyptic vibe and kind of talking about that without giving too much away because I don't really want to talk about it in like a lot of detail currently because it's still very 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 new but for the past like two weeks now maybe even three weeks I have had this feeling of just wanting to write so bad and this feeling isn't obviously new to me. I did English Lit and Creative Writing in uni, just in case you didn't know or if you're new. I did do that at uni, so I'm kind of used to the feeling of wanting to write, but I haven't had it, oh my god, probably since I finished uni now, which is borderlining coming up to a year, which is absolutely terrifying. But I haven't had the feeling of needing to write, like needing to put words on paper, for so 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 long and I kind of like just brushed it aside and was like right I'm just gonna read a book and see if that kind of sorts it out for me and it hasn't done so 
I'm writing again. I've had this story, or not really a story, but I've had this feeling and this like narrative that I've wanted to always write. And I've been thinking about it a lot, probably for a couple of months now, but I never had an idea to tell the story, if that makes sense. Like I didn't have a plot, I didn't have a storyline. I just had this feeling that I needed to get out there. And so as the weeks have continued of having this feeling, I have just been kind of thinking about plots and storylines and characters that I can kind of portray that into. And as of last night, I started plotting, planning, writing, a new story. I have like almost fallen in love with writing again. I think studying it for uni definitely had its benefits but it also definitely had its flaws and obviously naturally did kind of suck the fun out of it for me because I was only writing for grades. So it makes me so happy that I now feel like I'm getting back or hopefully anyway getting back to writing for me and writing for enjoyment and writing as something that I really just want to pursue because I always used to be like that and it was always my biggest dream to write and to publish a book and to become an author and for the past couple of months ever since finishing uni I kind of accepted that that part of myself and like that hobby just needed to take a back seat and it definitely did and I think kind of accepting that was very very bittersweet for me because writing has always been a form of catharsis and then feeling like I couldn't do that because writing became something that was almost a chore with uni because it needed to be done and it needed to be kind of to the best of my ability and wasn't always what I wanted to write it kind of took the fun out of it. So I feel like I'm slowly but surely getting back into the swing of feeling like I can write for me and it's okay and there's no pressure and it makes me so happy. I can only hope that it's gonna stay and that by default I'm going to be as consistent with it as I possibly can. Like small goals, I'm just gonna make myself every single month to write, I don't know, a certain number of days every month and just see where that takes me. But yeah, so I am writing a new story and obviously I wanted to update that because it is hopefully gonna continue to be a bigger part of my life like it did used to be. But yeah, those are my updates. As of right now, it is 20 past five. I have no idea where the day is gone. I'm hopefully gonna write a little bit more. That feels so weird, but I'm hopefully gonna write a little bit more. I also do wanna read a little bit more today, whether it's gonna be Greek lessons or station 11. I feel like this is kind of gonna be my current like nightly read. And yeah, those are all of the updates currently. I'm gonna do all of that and I'll update you soon. Mm -hmm.